At ground level, it's hard to get a sense of the effects a construction site can have on the surrounding area. The streams and lakes where people hike and fish, and the neighborhoods where people live. But from up here, you can start to see how soil runoff and erosion from stormwater can affect the area around a site, which is part of the reason why it's critical to use best management practices, or BMPs, to control a site's environmental impact. Of course, the other part is that it would violate laws if we didn't control erosion. We realize that working a construction project is an intense job. There are deadlines to make, and building specs and codes to meet, and of course, budgets to consider. It's easy to see how checking on a silt fence or inlet every week or after a rain might be overlooked. But these and other best management practices that control erosion, trap stormwater, and maintain water quality are essential to a successful project. One that preserves the health of the surrounding environment and communities. And one that isn't marred by fines for not meeting permit requirements or keeping documentation current. With this video, we want to make it easier for you to implement erosion control measures and keep documentation current. Before construction can begin, depending on local regulations, either the site owner, contractor, or both must file a notice of intent form to obtain the required coverage under National Pollution Discharge Elimination System, NPDES General Permit. This permit requires that you implement BMPs to control runoff, reduce the level of sediment carried away from the site by stormwater drainage, eliminate trash and debris, and control other pollutants from the construction site. After the NOI form is filed, the local stormwater authority will authorize coverage under the NPDES general permit. Also, the NOI or permit authorization should be posted at the entrance of the project site with a brief description of the site and the name and number of a local contact person. Just as important, every site should have an updated stormwater pollution prevention plan. SWIP. Inspection forms should be completed and on file and along with the SWIP easily available in the on-site construction office. The plan should include details about best management practices to control site runoff at each phase of the project. A contractor must inspect a site's stormwater controls according to the permit or project contract requirements. These inspections are essential because they can catch problems early and prevent bigger problems down the road. If a control isn't working, the contractor must correct the problem and revise the SWIP. Also, if inspection forms aren't current and accurate, it could result in expensive fines. And if the forms are falsified, it could even result in jail time. Let's take a look around this site to view some of the common erosion control techniques. Consult your site's stormwater pollution prevention plan to see which of these will be used at your job. First, identify every area where work has been finished and graded, or areas that will sit unworked, typically 14 days or longer, depending on permit requirements. Once identified, those areas must be stabilized according to the pollution prevention plan. Stabilization is the most effective way to prevent erosion. For most areas, you can use sod or grass seed, a rolled erosion control product, hay or mulch. All areas should receive final stabilization within seven days of completion. Most sites employ structural BMPs to contain sediment runoff. These fall into two categories. Structural controls, such as diversion ditches with check dams, inlet protection, and silt fences, slow the actual flow of stormwater so that the sediment settles out. Installing proper BMPs such as check dams, inlet protection, and silt fences slows the flow of stormwater over the surface areas so the sediment settles out. These controls are intended to improve water quality so it won't choke local streams or lakes with excessive sediment runoff or with any soil-borne toxins that can affect people or wildlife in the surrounding areas. The second category of controls are designed to capture sediment that has already been picked up by runoff. These include sediment basins, ponds, and traps designed to hold runoff water for at least 24 hours, which is enough time for most of the sediment to drop out of the water. Sediment levels should be checked regularly. When a control structure is half full, clean it out so that it continues to work properly. 
Construction exits can also be a source of problems, especially for mud tracked onto public roads. As soon as possible, pave entrances, or at least follow the best management practices to stabilize them with rock on top of a geotextile fabric. Washing tires of exiting vehicles or street sweeping may also be necessary. Soil stockpiles should be stabilized to reduce erosion. Also, pay close attention to all storage areas where fuels, concrete sealers, solvents, or any other chemicals are stored. These should be secured and held in weatherproof containers, and always locate them as far as possible from ponds and streams. This way, if a spill occurs, there's a better chance of intercepting and cleaning it up before it reaches nearby bodies of water. Consult your SWIP and governing regulations for more details on how to properly store these materials and handle spills. The final source of pollution is general trash and debris, which stormwater can wash away. This can also result in penalties. Trash and debris should simply be disposed of immediately to prevent problems. After every inspection, an inspection form noting any problems and changes must be signed and filed with the Stormwater Pollution Prevention Plan. The final step comes after construction is complete and final soil stabilization has been achieved. Depending on local regulations, either the owner, contractor, or both file a notice of termination. Once this is done, the job should be finished. So remember, before starting a project, an NOI form must be filed to obtain the NPDES general permit. Install BMPs according to the SWIP and perform inspections to make sure erosion control BMPs are in place and working. Keep paperwork current. Together, these measures will minimize stormwater runoff and keep a construction site from incurring costly penalties. Filing the notice of termination should wrap everything up. Most important, the job will be completed with minimal environmental impact on nearby streams, ponds, and the surrounding neighborhoods where people live, work, and play.